In the midst of time and tides, the mystery of the lost city of Atlantis has captivated minds and hearts across the globe. This ancient tale, first spun by the philosopher Plato, has sparked endless fascination and debate for centuries. Atlantis, described in intricate detail as a utopian civilization, lost to the sea, has transcended the realm of myth and entered the annals of real-world exploration and investigation. The allure of this lost city has given birth to a plethora of theories, each more intriguing than the last. From theories suggesting Atlantis was swallowed by the Bermuda Triangle, to those that place it in the Mediterranean, the quest for Atlantis has spanned oceans and continents. Yet, despite the myriad of conjectures, the enigma of Atlantis remains largely unsolved. As we delve deeper into this mystery, a new theory emerges, one that places the lost city not beneath the waves, but amidst the dunes of the Sahara Desert. Could the key to unlocking the enigma of Atlantis be hidden in the sands of the Sahara? Nestled in the heart of Mauritania, Africa, lies a geological marvel known as the Rishat structure, or the Eye of the Sahara. This striking formation, almost 50 kilometers wide, is a symphony of circles. Its concentric rings, each with its distinct hue, are a testament to the power of natural forces. And though it's situated in a remote region, it's not hidden from view. In fact, it's so massive that astronauts have used it as a landmark while orbiting the Earth. The Eye of the Sahara is not just a feast for the eyes, it's also a window into the past. Geologists theorize that this structure was formed over hundreds of millions of years. It's like a time capsule, each ring representing a different geological era. From the molten magma that shaped its core, to the wind and water that sculpted its outer layers, the Richat structure tells a story of Earth's transformation over eons. But why is it called the Eye of the Sahara? Well, from a bird's eye view, or rather, a satellite's perspective, the Richat structure resembles an enormous eye. The concentric circles mimic the iris and the pupil, and the surrounding desert forms the white of the eye. It's an uncanny resemblance, one that has fired up imaginations and sparked tales of mystery and intrigue. And it's not just its appearance that's intriguing. This geological anomaly is located in one of the most inhospitable regions on Earth, the Sahara Desert. It's a place of extreme temperatures, fierce winds, and relentless sun. Yet amidst this harsh landscape, the Eye of the Sahara stands as a testament to the resilience of nature and perhaps a hint of its sense of humor. A natural phenomenon, or could it be the footprint of the fabled city of Atlantis? A theory that has stirred the pot of speculation links the Eye of the Sahara to the lost city of Atlantis. Yes, Atlantis, that fabled ancient civilization said to have vanished beneath the waves, leaving no trace but mysteries. The Richat structure, with its concentric circles and vast expanse, has been presented as a potential site for this enigmatic city. Let's delve a bit deeper into this intriguing proposition. The key to this connection lies in the descriptions left by the ancient Greek philosopher, Plato. According to him, Atlantis was a grand city, composed of concentric islands separated by wide moats and linked by a canal that penetrated to the city's center. Now, if you squint a bit and let your imagination take the reins, you might see how the Richat structure, with its concentricality and grand scale, could fit this description. Moreover, Plato's account mentions the city sinking around 9,000 years before his time. This would place Atlantis in the Neolithic period, a time when the Sahara was not the barren desert we know today, but a lush, green landscape. Could it be that the Richot structure was once the thriving city of Atlantis, now etched into the face of the desert? The proponents of this theory argue that the Sahara was flooded by the Atlantic Ocean 12,000 years ago. That also seems to solve the problem of the Richot structure not being on an island. Well, perhaps it was back then. They also claim that the Richot structure matches Plato's description of Atlantis's size, which roughly translates to 23,005 kilometers, 14.5 miles in diameter. And, among other things, they also point to the surrounding geography, that there were mountains to the north of the city that was otherwise surrounded by flat plains, and open to the Atlantic Ocean to the south. The theory linking the eye of the Sahara to Atlantis is certainly intriguing, and it's one that stirs the imagination. It presents us with a tantalizing possibility, a hint of a mystery waiting to be solved. But is this connection valid 
or merely a mirage in the desert. As captivating as this theory may be, it has been met with a healthy dose of skepticism. The allure of uncovering a lost civilization has fueled many a wild theory, but the atlantis rachat connection has been met with more than a few raised eyebrows. Critics often point out the notable discrepancies in size. NASA puts the size of the structure at 45 kilometers, 28 miles. That's almost twice as big as what is indicated in Plato's description. Then there's the question of geography. Atlantis was said to be surrounded by the sea, a bustling maritime hub that held sway over surrounding islands. And despite what the proponents of the Atlantis theory claim, there's absolutely no evidence that Western Africa was underwater thousands of years ago. So that argument also appears to lack merit. The Richot structure sits landlocked in the heart of the Sahara, a far cry from the seafaring civilization of legend. The mountains to the north are hardly an amazing match either, and since the Richat is in the Sahara, there is desert sand where there aren't mountains, but they are definitely not plains. And as for the opening to the ocean, although there is indeed a sand drift to the southwest, it certainly doesn't open to the ocean, which is to the west. But perhaps the most compelling argument against the theory is the lack of substantial archaeological evidence. Despite extensive research and exploration, no artifacts or ruins have been found that link the Rachat structure to the lost city of Atlantis. No remnants of ancient architecture, no traces of a once thriving civilization. So, the Eye of the Sahara appears to be a geological marvel, its origins rooted firmly in natural processes, not ancient myth. In the face of these criticisms, the theory linking the Richat structure to Atlantis appears to be on shaky ground. It's an intriguing theory indeed, but without concrete evidence, it remains just that, a theory. So, the idea that the Richat structure hold the key to Atlantis seems to be just another dead end. Except, of course, if further exploration proves otherwise. The quest for Atlantis is a journey through time, speculation, and interpretation. The Richat structure, this majestic geological wonder, has undeniably stirred the pot of speculation. Its circular formation, visible even from space, indeed bears a striking resemblance to the concentric circles Plato described in his account of Atlantis. Yet this similarity alone cannot confirm the Richat structure as the lost city. The discrepancies in size and geographical setting between Plato's Atlantis and the Richat structure are hard to ignore. Atlantis, as described by Plato, was an island situated beyond the pillars of Hercules at the Strait of Gibraltar, that is, in the Atlantic Ocean, a location far removed from the Sahara's arid expanse. Moreover, the lack of archaeological evidence to support the Atlantis connection further weakens the theory. So, where does this leave us? The Richat structure as Atlantis remains an intriguing hypothesis, but one that lacks substantial evidence. The skeptics' arguments hold sway, emphasizing the need for concrete proof before we can rewrite history. Yet, the allure of mystery persists. The Richat structure, with its unique formation and enigmatic presence, continues to captivate us. Whether or not it is the lost city of Atlantis, it stands as a testament to the wonders of our world, both natural and potentially man-made. So what is your take? Which side of the argument are you on? Could the Eye of the Sahara be the lost city of Atlantis? Share your thoughts and follow us for more amazing stuff.